Good evening, I'm Sharad Kutin, and welcome to Consider This, the show that uh, proposes that you consider and then reconsider some of the news of the day. Now, in the New Malaysia, we have a lot of exciting <coughs> conversations, and one of them has to do with electoral reform. Uh, over a year ago, the Electoral Reform Committee was set up uh, and given a two-year time frame to come up with proposals to change uh, the way that we vote and the way we elect our elected representatives. Now, I'm very happy to have uh, Tan Sri Abdul Harashid Abdul Rahman, who is the chairperson of the Electoral Reform Committee with me this evening to discuss uh, what they're going to be talking about, what they've been talking about for this year, and in fact, there's an interim report due in December. So, thank you very much for joining me. Um, yes, yes. I just for the purposes of uh, helping everybody uh, or leveling up everybody, could you tell me a little bit about the composition of the committee? Well, who uh, is in the committee? What kind of expertise do they bring to this conversation? Well, we have uh, roughly 18 people in the committee, uh, six of whom are, are taken as permanent rep. They are with us all the time uh, and uh, the other nine uh, the other uh, nine or ten uh, from uh, uh, various uh, sectors uh, we took them in as, as uh, a member of the committee and uh, they attend a meeting they do some research when they are asked to uh, they are altogether 18 people. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. And you, of course, were chairperson of the uh, election commission yourself, a 2000 to 2008, I, I believe. Um, and correct. Yeah. yeah, and you know, I mean, it must be surprising to uh, many people that when you were named, uh, because because uh, for a long time the election commission was uh, the object of a lot of uh, criticism. <laughs> were you surprised when you were made the chairperson? I, I wasn't surprised at all. Because I, I've been with the Electoral Commission, uh, first as secretary, and of course continued uh, uh, as chairman of the commission. Altogether, uh, I had uh, a stint of about 27 years. So, um, election is part of my, uh, my life. Your DNA. <laughs> so, so, when I'm asked to, in fact, uh, you know, I asked, uh, uh, the Prime Minister, why I'm selected. Uh, now he did say clearly, he said, uh, we want people who know the job. Right. And knowing the job clearly is something that, and knowing the system is, is something mm, mm. that you are uh, eminently qualified for. Uh, there is this other issue, of course, that for many years people saw the Election Commission as a tool of the government. Now, <laughs> the fact that you are a member of Basatu mm, mm, as well, mm, mm. Uh, is that something that you're concerned about? That uh, that in proposing a new system that you will be seen as a tool of the current government? Um, not so much you know, as a tool of the current government. But uh, we were talking about free and fair election. And all the time people are harping on that issue, you know, whether our elections are free and fair. And in terms of political parties, uh, whether they had that uh, freedom to uh, to be involved in, in, in the electoral process and uh, the playground is uh, level. Right. You know, when in election we always talk about level playground right. when it comes to uh, political parties and candidates. Right, I understand that just uh, last Wednesday you met with the political parties, all the yes. political parties. Yes. Uh, tell us a little bit about that because it does seem that in today's <laughs> Malaysia, uh, we require bipartisan support to actually push yes. the country forward. Yes, we were very happy that uh, they came around when we invited them. Uh, they came in droves. And, uh, a lot of them expressed their, their happiness that uh, uh, the government is willing to open up uh, uh, to this kind of... Uh, uh, to, to make sure that the uh, problem that, that are facing the, the country's uh, uh, electoral democracy is uh, is being addressed uh, in a way that uh, probably in coming elections will help will not you no longer face the problems that we have been facing before. Now uh, people talk about uh, the the electoral body as a tool. You know, it's not exactly that. You know, if 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 I'm allowed to explain, you know, actually election commission done an excellent job. You know, in uh, saying to it that elections are being uh, fairly 
have properly done. In spite of the fact that our electoral laws are not uh, so um, so backward, you know, it's, it's not sufficient enough to place the electoral body in a position where they can really deliver free and fair election. Yet, for the past 14 general elections, uh, the, the electoral body has been able to to um, really uh, uh, do their job and make sure that people are given that that right, that freedom to choose their government. Right. I, I think there's no mm. doubt that you know mm. generally the leg mm. legitimacy of the elections mm. and the electoral results were mm. there, yeah, yeah. but uh, there were complaints, and I think the last general election in particular. Uh, mm. I think the Election Commission suffered quite a bit of uh, damage to their credibility. But let's mm. put, put that aside. I mean, mm. I want to just look at some of the terms of reference that uh, you and, uh, and the members of the committee have brought uh, to this discussion. Um, how far-reaching uh, are you allowed to take this reform process, or reform thinking at least? Yes, um, we start with um, having to understand what actually uh, we have to do in strengthening democratic practices in the country. We talk about strengthening democratic practices and in particular uh, electoral democracy in the country. So we know very well that uh, we don't have really uh, uh, strong um, legislation, strong law uh, governing election in this country. Um, we have the Election Act which has been uh, introduced in when we got in the panel in 1957. And uh, that act has never been uh, amended uh, as to change a lot of things. There are a lot of missing components. If you talk about democracy, there are a lot of missing components within within the law. And within the existing system. Yes. I understand one of your terms of reference is to bring up uh, the Malaysian electoral system to an international standard, so basically looking at global best practices. Mm -hmm. Now, is that something that your committee is focused on? I mean, can, can you actually deliver on this? Yes, we, we were asked to do just that. Um, uh, first, of course, we were asked to look into our laws. And then, uh, at the same time, we look at uh, laws that are being utilized, used by uh, the so-called um, advanced democracies. And, uh, of course, we, at the same time, we look at what they do, the best practices hmm, that uh, they, they have been, uh, they have been uh, involved. And uh, um, we have done um, just that. Um, for the past one year, we have been going um, to several countries particularly the Commonwealth countries, looking at uh, uh, what exactly they do. Okay. Well, we'll go the take standard a, that they, right. they, they achieve, yeah. yeah okay, we'll take a short break and we'll come back to look at exactly what our colonial heritage has, did bequeath us and how, in fact, many countries have moved beyond mm -hmm. the British system of first past the post. Mm -hmm. Stay tuned to consider this. Welcome back to Consider This. I'm Sharad Kutin. My guest, Tansri Abdul Rashid Abdul Rahman, is the chairperson of the Electoral Reform Committee, tasked to look at changing our election system to something that conforms to international standards and best practices and will deliver a democratic election system. Now, uh, we ended up, or would you saying that you know, you've actually visited some former uh, British uh, Commonwealth countries, um, and most of us uh, take their parliamentary system as uh, the template um, and the yeah. first past the post system, right? Uh, which very simply means that the person with the largest number of votes in a constituency, even if it's not a majority, yeah. takes yeah. that seat. And then the composition of the assembly follows from that. Now, 
there are pro problems, very well recognized problems. What is it that uh, you think ought to be changed? I mean, do you think, are you thinking of wholesale change at state level, at the federal level, for Sabah and Sarawak? How are you thinking about managing the change of our electoral system? Yes, we, are, we have discussed uh, so much already about the, the system itself, the first part of the post. Uh, it served its purpose uh, uh, since it was introduced. Uh, but people uh, in the beginning um, uh, really don't, re don't really understand how uh, the mechanism, uh, how, how the, the, the system works. So people just accept at that face value you know, of, the, of the system. Uh, we are talking about uh, uh, the other systems that exist. You know, not all Commonwealth countries are using are using um, the first past the post anymore. Right, they've changed, haven't they? Uh, yes. Um, uh, the two countries that uh, uh, they are retaining, but with a lot of changes uh, in between, uh, Britain and and Canada, uh, the rest have changed um, either to pro proportional um, representation system. Or um, uh, what they call mixed system, right? The mixed member proportional mixed system. Mixed member proportional system, and uh, um, partly uh, first past the post, but partly proportional. Uh, but of course, uh, uh, we can always uh, look at the both system, and uh, perhaps uh, we apply with some changes to our situation. Right. So I understand and this came out in a report recently that the thinking seems to be that at the state level, for the state assemblies, they will, uh, you will propose to maintain the first pass, the post yes. system, yes. but for yes. the federal assembly mm -hmm. that we will have a mixed proportional system, meaning uh, part of that an individual voter will get two votes. Mm -hmm. One that will elect a, a member of parliament that is representative of that com uh, constituent but also from a party list, yeah. and that will change things. So what, is, what is the thinking behind this new idea or adoption of this new system? We, we look at the, uh, the requirement, um, uh, how people look at the Paki Rakyat representative. Um, at state level, people still need Paki uh, Rakyat. Uh, they, they, because Paki Rakyat I look upon as Welfare officers. The welfare is actually uh, uh, what is important to, to the people. Right. Um, the idea is that they're lawmakers, right? Not just they, welfare no, officers. We, we know they are lawmakers, but uh, they are more involved, you know, their daily uh, routine uh, engagement with people uh, uh, so much that uh, it, has, it has become a culture that, you know, working Raya, there is. The welfare officer, uh, he attends to the requirement uh, of uh, the needs of the people daily, especially when uh, uh, I've been talking about our delivery system, uh, the government that, that is not reaching, the government system that is not reaching the people. People don't really understand sometimes, and they need uh, this working right to, to bridge that kind of uh, gap, you know, between uh, the government and the people. And Wakil Rakyat has been doing a uh, good job as far as the rural, especially the rural folks are concerned. And uh, we thought that uh, uh, we should maintain the system at state level uh, because Wakil Rakyat uh, maintains smaller, smaller uh, constituency. The more manageable. Smaller area, uh, manageable. But uh, we feel because there is pressure that people thought that the, 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 the first possible system is not really very fair uh, because uh, uh, there are parties uh, earning less than 50%, getting more than 50% of the seats and uh, 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 forming the government. You know, there are occasions, you know, in the, the, the uh, 2013 election for example you know one party got 49 percent the other party got uh, uh, 50 over percent but the 49 percent got to form the government and uh, had more seats because of disparities in 
in the way uh, seats are being allocated. Uh, but if you, if you allocate seats according to the total number of votes cast, uh, then um, you will have to allocate seats to, to the parties that uh, acquire uh, the biggest number of votes. There's also this uh, problem, though. I mean, it's, it's said uh, often in the literature that with pure uh, uh, proportional representation systems, you mm, have instability mm. because you have a uh, fracturing of the political system mm, and mm. the small, small parties. And in fact, you have mm. a paradox of small parties becoming <laughs> kingmakers. You see that in Israel, mm, you see that mm, in, mm, in Italy mm, and many mm, other countries mm. uh, that uh, have that system. What are the primary political values that your committee wants to espouse? Is it stability? Is it fairness and in terms of representation? There are trade-offs. What is more important? In fact, uh, fairness is, is the main uh, criteria. Um, what is important here, and people should, should know, that even the smallest party will have a chance of uh, putting in their representative in, in, in the day one. Uh, for example, the, the parties belonging to the minority, the minority group will have representative uh, because we, we, we will have well, to set up uh, the, uh, the rules that you know, if you achieve certain number of votes, you will get certain seats in the other one. At the same time, we can always allocate seats uh, uh, as they do in, in Australia, in New Zealand to the natives, to the indigenous people. And we have our orang asli here, uh, who should uh, be uh, given some consideration uh, to have their reps. Right, because orang their... asli have had a senator since independence, mm, yes. right? Mm. The, does your, and very quickly, does your reform uh, agenda also include looking at uh, Dewan Negara reform? No, not Dewan Negara, but uh, we hope to introduce a system where they they will be allowed to to have some uh, an, a good number of seats in the day one without having to compete with the with the rest of the people the right. masses. Okay, yeah. I understand. Mm. Okay, we're going to take another short break and we'll be back with uh, consider this. <laughs> Welcome back to Consider This. I'm sure I'd cut in with Nitansri Abdul Rashid Abdul Rahman, who is the chairperson of the Election Reform Committee. Very important committee that's going to help us uh, lead the conversation, at least, in terms of uh, reforms of the electoral system. Uh, very quickly, are you thinking merely of going to Parliament with these proposals when it comes to the time? Uh, or is there going to be, as, as, has, as has happened in many countries, including New Zealand that you mentioned earlier, uh, they've actually gone to the people. It was a referendum <laughs> that allowed for electoral reform uh, change. Well, yes, in, in most of the Commonwealth countries, they do have laws on referendum. Whatever um, change in the laws or, or whatever new things are to be introduced in the country, that affects the people generally. They will go down to the people uh, in the form of referendum. But we don't have a law on referendum here. And therefore, um, um, in, in, in uh, exchange for that, we go down to the people in the form of uh, 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 libat urus, what you call it, uh, engagement, public engagement. And we have done that uh, uh, all over the country. And uh, we receive uh, good uh, uh, support. Right. From all around. Okay, I, I want to ask a little bit about uh, Sabah and Sarawak now because they uh, are also very specific to the way in which Malaysia operates. I mean, three territories that came together, well, actually, four territories that came together in 1963, and then we've left with three now that form Malaysia. And there's a lot of, there's a very strong states' rights based politics happening in Sabah and Sarawak now. Now, any reform that diminishes the representation of Sabah and Sarawak, I can imagine 
will uh, meet with stiff opposition from representatives yeah. on that side of the country. Uh, mm -hmm. How do you propose to make the system fair, uh, but also ensure Sabah and Sarawak uh, representation, a fixed representation in the Federal Assembly? Well, um, we cannot have different rules for different uh, uh, units. Uh, we have got three units in the Federation, Sabah, Sarawak and and uh, the, the uh, Semenanjung Malaysia. Um, when we have the Malaysia Agreement, uh, it has been uh, suggested that uh, there should be equal representation, equal number of seats allocated to each of the units, which means if we have two, two, two uh, seats uh, and uh, um, each unit is to share the two, 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 they will be getting around what, 70 seats each. But uh, in terms of uh, uh, eligibility, you talk about the law, the rules that have been set for delimitation. Um, the first um, condition is they must have enough voters uh, to, in order to, to earn uh, seats and now we we go we divide our seats according to number of voters uh, that are available uh, that is a common rule that is that is what the constitution provides right but so this would be the hmm. uh, one man one vote principle that all constituents should be roughly about the same size i mean there are some there is some given it's been in fact it's given a little too much over time but but that would be the principle wouldn't we it? didn't stick so much to that rule, one man will vote. If we do that, then there will be no seats for the rural people. Uh, not much seats for the rural people. But uh, you know, uh, we still consider one man, one vote um, uh, principle as, as, as uh, a good principle in terms of uh, voting. But then uh, uh, we have problem in allocating more seats than what it has today for Sabah and what they have today for Sabah and Sarawak. Because of the number of the number of constituents, number of electors that they have in the country, right? We so were hoping. Sab Saban yeah. are actually overrepresented. Is that was that would be the argument? That is. Uh, Pahang is overrepresented. Selangor is underrepresented. <laughs> that, that is the argument that they have today. Um, but uh, uh, a lot of political uh, decision will have to be made. Now, if the country feels that uh, Sabah and Sarawak should get more to comply with what has been promised under the, the uh, Malaysia, agreement, agreement. Malaysia agreement, then I think we should uh, find ways to, to comply, irrespective of what uh, our rules are set, rules are set for uh, determining the limitation of conferences. Uh, but uh, as far as we are concerned, uh, we have no mandate to, to really uh, do something that is different. Uh, 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 we have to have a common law for all. Right. Uh, in the remaining minutes that we have, um, you know, many people are impatient for mm. change in the new Malaysia. Is it good to rush into a wholesale change of the system? Do you, what kind of, how do you imagine change actually happening in Malaysia in the, in the kind of middle, mid-term period? Should we rush? <laughs> Should we do it very slowly, gradually? <laughs> What's your thoughts? It depends on what change people are asking for. You know, I don't think a change in this is, is something that has been uh, going, to, uh, is going to be rushed through. Now, we have been waiting for this for a long time now. I've been asking for a change for a long time in our system. Uh, what people uh, don't really uh, appreciate is um, there has been uh, uh, we have been having a, a, a legal system, a legal uh, electoral system. Our laws are so so bad that it, it does not contain really and the the important elements that should be there uh, uh, in an electoral practice. If you talk about democracy in election, then uh, we should have our uh, electoral laws uh, changed completely. 
uh, without having to think about rushing through or what, this is what is required by the country. We have grown uh, over over the years. You know, we have we are now we are now uh, a democracy that has to be uh, 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 pushed up to the level to the standard that uh, our developed uh, uh, friends outside uh, had already achieved. And that's, that is what we are trying to achieve here, a standard that is comparable to what they have achieved. And I think uh, it is fair if we introduce that standard in our, in our election. Right, wonderful. So we look forward to the interim report coming out in December right. mm. and then the final report uh, mm. out next year before August, right? That would be yeah. the limit of your term, two yes. years. You get. Yes. Thank you so much, uh, Tansri, yeah. for being right. on the show. Thank you. I've had uh, Tansri Abdul Rashid Abdul Rahman, Chairperson of the Electoral Reform Committee, with me this evening. That's all we have for you on Consider This. I'm Sharad Kutin, only for Astro One. <laughs>